If I could sum up this year with three words, it would probably be expectations, reality, disappointment. Rather lackluster year, truth to be told. Most big boy projects were either offensively average or so disappointing I forgot I've even watched them this year and not in 1997. The sad part is that the next year doesn't promise to be that good either. Most of what I see is either following the previous year trends, some nostalgia bait or something I would want to watch only out of morbid curiosity. And now I have to give some arbitrary awards to this whole drivel. Well, let's begin then. Also, still can't be arsed to draw actual awards for them, so I don't know, just Google a goose face and put it on the poster as a sign of my approval or something. Honestly speaking, this year was a very divisive one on what I actually considered to be good. And it was very hard to choose between Hakume and Mikochi and how to not summon a demon lord. One is better on a technical level, but the story wasn't that original even though I liked it, while the other is worse technically, and now that I think about it, the story isn't as original as I thought it to be initially, but I still think it's good by dialogue alone. I'll let them both be on it. After all, nothing unites people better than a hatred to compromise. <laughs> Not really much to say about it, because I think it's pretty self-explanatory, if you know my previous worst anime of the year, but unlike Aho Girl, this anime was saved purely because of its art style and because it really doesn't pretend to be anything better than it is, so I can't really be angry on it for too long. Not sure if it's fair to put short animes on this list, but since this is the first anime that made me physically ill, I guess it qualifies for the worst nomination, and so our first worst anime award goes to Honda-san. I would probably place it on a higher spot, but I haven't watched the entirety of it, and the only thing I remember about it is the crippling headache from the graphics, so there's that. Violet Tower Garden was a very pretty anime to watch, albeit slightly predictable, so I would've probably gave this anime a place on this top 5 for the visuals alone, because competence has to be rewarded, but thankfully it was also a very well-made drama, at least on a technical level. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I love, there's one thing that I hate, and there are things that just bore me, and Hinamatsuri is probably just that. A mediocre anime that's not special in any way, shape or form. The only reason why it's not higher is because I at least remember it enough to use it as a reference. Japanese can't really do action well unless it's either very short or the size of a Viking saga. The problems with it always fall into one of several deal breakers. Its plot makes barely any sense, like in pop, 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 pop. its visuals are basic bitch fan service, or it's just blatantly boring to watch. And the only reason Killing Bites is here is because it managed to combine all three aforementioned flaws yet be so boring I nearly forgot it existed. Disappointing, really. I did not expect much, and you still underachieved. I was kind of torn between Rascal Doesn't Dream of Bunny Girl, Senpai and A Place Further Than the Universe, and the only reason why it is even in here is because I remember more about the former than the latter, and as I've said before, this year wasn't really that notable for good stuff, so it's either this or nothing. So congrats, Rascal! Your diet Bakemonogatari ways have given you an arbitrary award. <laughs> You know, this almost slipped into the bad category, but in the end of the day, it was competent enough to not be shit, but not good enough to be the actual best. Congrats, darling and the Franks, you're better than whatever next anime is going to be. Shame you were so boring and forgettable that I can't even remember what I liked or hated in you in the first place. Video game adaptations to anime is what anime and comic book adaptations to movies, now that I think about it. Though some of those are good, they are a tiny speck of sand in the vast desert of mediocrity and piss, and nothing better illustrates it than Caligula. The only reason why this is worse than Thousand Musketeers is that at least that looks like an anime. This is just a bunch of poorly stringed cutscenes from the game, and that's me being very generous towards it. I still stand by my words that this is the closest modern anime had come to my golden standard of adaptation, and for that, Banana Fish, I will give you the second place on this poll. If it weren't for you, I would have had to give this place to Devilman Crybaby, and to be honest, I didn't really like it aside of music, so all's well that ends well. <laughs> Do you remember that Ancient Marcus Bride came this year? I didn't. In fact, it took me a while to even remember what it even was. To think that this thing was so talked about when I watched it, only to be turning out so mediocre and forgettable. Not even porn saved it, and that's impressive in its own right.
Speaking of adaptations, if video game adaptations are like the visual representation of that how do you do fellow kids meme, visual novel adaptations are the big toenails of anime industry, they serve no practical purpose other than eventually growing into your skin and catching infection. And Island is a great example of that, being not only very confusing plot-wise, but also just life-drainingly dull, though considering that this is a story about time travel, one shouldn't be too surprised. The most obvious candidate for anime of the year would be the absolutely magnificent Conception, but I'm sadly forced to disqualify it because it was so incredibly good that it caused some kind of reality collapse that erased it from existence and replaced it with a show about getting women pregnant, but not really. Besides that, 2018 didn't have a little bitch academia, that is an anime I can call really good without having to qualify the statement, but since I'm forced to pick from the Focomelia babies, Zombieland Saga was probably the one with the least birth defects, though the plot and characters presumably came free with the script writing software, Zombieland Saga successfully balances comedy and drama and have managed to be an original anime that's actually good and that's already impressive as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I wanted to choose an anime that would represent all the animes that were so mind-bogglingly boring but weren't so bad I wanted to slit my throat with a copy of Werker's Serdjuchka album and Thousand Noble Musketeers are the prime example of such. I'm honestly not sure if I can even call it an anime, it's more of a trainer video for Insomniacs. In an industry where making original ideas is like snow and Sahara desert, new intellectual properties should be encouraged as they make their first steps towards their first paycheck, but it doesn't mean they should get complacent, and so I give the first place of the year's shittiest show award to Derrida who drunkenly stumbled through time. If it just had a main character who was as appealing as an angry cat that's been strapped to the side of your head, that might have been enough, but the plot and the action was like eating a pancake whose maker gave up halfway through making it and then just rolled his balls on it and deep fried the result. Only at least filming that would have been more entertaining. Mm -hmm. 